What's good? My name is Ty. I'm a former Army combat photographer and the owner of Flash Film Media. And this channel right here is the channel you go to when you're ready to take your skill set to the next level, when you're ready to make profit, not just pretty pictures. Today, we're talking about a trick they don't teach you in photography class. It's a way to play the mental game, to do damn good work and impress the clients while getting the referrals that keep you going. So look at me right now. What do you see? Your first instinct may be a very good looking African-American YouTuber with a nice beard that connect on the sides with a few gray hairs. Look, whatever. Thank you for that. But this is more than a YouTube video. This is well thought out composition. I've got my props of light behind me that are bright enough to be interesting, but not bright enough to be distracting. We're playing with some depth of field so you can focus on me. What I'm seeing is this camera lens, but what you're seeing is me looking directly at you into the depths of your soul. It's like we're making eye contact when I look into that lens, but it's by design. Today, we're talking about eye line. What is your subject looking at? What does it do to your viewers psychologically? Now, we're going to get into this, but let me break down for you why this is important. What separates the professionals from the amateurs elsewhere is the pros are bigger, faster, stronger. They go harder and play harder. But photography doesn't really work the same way. Nobody cares if you can outrun Hussein Bolt or lift a taco truck. A professional is marked by experience. The knowledge they gain while on the job and their ability to think about the situations in useful ways. Anybody can snap a photo. But the people who make real money doing this are the people who understand the decisions they're making five layers deep. The real pros are the people who can think about the story behind the story. So let's talk about eye tracking. There are whole businesses that do nothing but study behavior around where you look. These people literally have cameras facing customers and they track where their eyeballs are looking. They take this data and they generate something called a heat map. It looks something like this. The red areas are where people spend the most of their time looking. Now, the biggest findings here are that people spend a very long time looking at faces. We're biologically programmed to seek out and look at the faces of other people. But what you might not know is the number two thing we look at. The second most viewed thing is whatever the subject of the photo was looking at. If they're looking to the left, we'll follow their eye line to the left. If a magazine ad is selling a watch, we're going to sell more watches if the guy is looking right at it. In part two of the series, available exclusively to our Gold Plus members, we'll break down every single part of this. But for now, let's focus on eye lines. Learning how to make your viewer look wherever you want them to is a very valuable Jedi mind trick. It's the type of thing clients pay extra for, the type of things that get you recommended, and it's even the type of thing that sells more stock photos. Let's take a look at a few famous examples. These people had the idea of putting a cute baby in their ad to get more attention. It worked, but the baby was distracting from the product. So look at these alternative takes. They noticed the baby, followed the eye line, and then read the product copy, which does the hard selling. Same here. The only change is the eye line of the model. With that, 1% more of the viewers are buying this product. Now, 1% may not seem like a lot, but when you're showing an ad to millions of people, that 1% translate to 10,000 more sales. It's a big deal. So marketers and web designers who build these ads and websites often look for photos of people looking to the side or to a corner so that they can design a page to put their main message there. The rule of thumb is simple. If the subject is looking left, the viewer will look left. Up, down, right, the same principles apply. The further away from the center the subject is looking, the stronger this effect is. When the subject is looking directly at the camera like I'm doing right now, it creates a personal connection. I'm looking right at you. I'm talking to you directly. I want you to feel like we're connecting. I want you to remember this stuff. I want you to remember me. Now that you understand this, you'll see this technique being used in ads all the time. Those sad ads about donating to shelters or helping starving kids or sad kittens, the subjects are looking right into the camera because they want the viewer to feel a connection. That's intentional. How about the old Uncle Sam posters where he's pointing at you? Actually, pointing is just as effective as eye line, but that's something we'll cover in the G Plus member section. We break down this eye tracking data as well as how you can use it. So how does this apply to you? Well, remember that photography is about outsmarting the world around you. 
If you're doing a photo shoot for a client's website and you know what the website looks like, you can use this knowledge to give some extra input and suggestions. This is how you get those really good reviews from clients that say they really knew what they were doing. And my favorite, I never thought about that. So if you're trying to sell stock photos or videos, take more photos with the model looking to the side, to the corner, looking and pointing up. There are more marketers out there than you think looking for a lady in a wheelchair, looking to the side, and they're willing to pay for it. Every single job you do is going to help you. Now stick around for part two of this video available to my G Plus members. We're going to go over other results of these eye tracking studies. We'll talk about things that your eyes are drawn to and how you can use those in your composition to get those clients that passed you up and didn't want to have anything to do with. All right, guys, part two of this will be available right now on our Flash Film Academy app. And if you don't got the app, what are you waiting for? Go to flashfilmacademy.com or download the app in your app store, sign up, and go ahead and get part two of this so that I can teach you how to implement this on your next project. All right, guys, until then, be inspired, be creative, be profitable.